welcome to Kachwerke. Quick um, information about how to get a good signal and the different ways of getting a good DI signal into your um, door. Um, please remember these videos are aimed at home users, not some big fancy gazillion dollar studio. This is for home use. Um, so I've got a couple of diagrams here. And um, this basically is a way to uh, visually explain the different ways. So obviously you've got your computer running your door. You've got your interface, which can be anything from the Behringer ones, the Motus, all different kinds. Um, and you've got your guitar and your pedal board. So the classic easiest straight away way to do this is to plug your guitar straight into your guitar interface and then in your door you apply whatever um, uh, um, amsum you've got, amplitude or whatever you've got. So um, your guitar is pretty simply laid out, you've got your guitar it goes straight into the input um, or it goes through your pedal board into your input and then record it to a track or two tracks or stereo track whatever you want in your door. Now I don't like this way of doing things. I've noticed that um, firstly putting your pedal board straight in there you might have some issues with um, too hard to signal. Um, there's also seems to be a lot of these interfaces run straight off USB. They are not powered. Um, they tend to have a lot of buzzing. They, they're not grounded very well or they're grounded through the PC and they pick up all sorts of noises. So I don't think that's the best way to do it. So I like to do it excuse me before we go on um, so you've got different inputs on your generally you've got different inputs on your um, interface you've got your uh, typical um, balance jack um, and then some there's a middle jack in the balance jack which is for your line or your, or your microphone your unbalanced mic inputs um, and the instrument inputs uh, or sometimes they have the little input close to it um, your controls are obviously sometimes you have a pad which is basically just an attenuation pad usually minus 10 dB um, you've got your line and instrument selector switch you've got um, a phantom power selector which runs your um, balanced inputs and then an input gain so usually you plug your guitar in straight into one of these holes and you select the instrument and off you go however I like to use a DI so the DI that I have portrayed here is a typical DI it's kind of based on a Behringer one um, and so instead of plugging straight into the interface you actually plug straight into the DI and the DI the balanced out then goes into the balanced in with um, phantom power engaged the reason to do this it's, it's just another good way of getting a clean clear signal but also to have a balanced signal so noise free which means you can also utilize the ground lift if you've got any issues so usually the di box is then powered directly by um, the phantom power that you've switched on on the interface so in this case you put your guitar straight into your input or via your pedal board you can then usually have attenuation pads um, on your DI box which means uh, you can lower the signal if it's a bit too hot you have a link which is basically just a copy of the input to go out it's kind of like a splitter if you ask me um, so in this case you plug directly into your door uh, excuse me directly into your DI box DI box out into your interface and interface into your door and you've got a lot more control and a much cleaner signal usually very very noise free as well the next one is a slight variation on this where you plug in everything in exactly the same way however you siphon off the input the link here and you put it into your amp whatever amp you're using that means that when you are recording or when you're auditioning or when you're playing or doing anything you are actually playing directly through your amp. Um, the original signal, which is either straight from the guitar or from your pedal board, both affects the amp, but it also goes straight into your door. So realistically, if you use a pedal board, you only have to apply the amp simulator and the cab simulator. If you use your guitar straight in without the pedal board, then obviously you might want to add any sort of um, 
um, simulated pedals, etc., etc. But this is a really nice way, nice way of really capturing the way that you play, um, all the kind of nuances that you have when you play through your amp, which I feel are lost when you go straight into an interface. That whole feeling of having the amp in front of you, the amp talking back to you, feedback, all these kind of things you can capture. Um, when you have feedback, that string resonance also translates and gets into your door so you've got a nicer um, feedback than if you just relied on your door to do the feedback with turning your speakers up. Um, the next one again is a slight variation on this is you actually hit the amp straight so you put your guitar, your pedal board, whatever you want straight into your amp head um, and you play as normal through your amp and through your pedal board again you siphon off a signal from your preamp so if your amp has got an effects loop you can use your um, send and effects send and return send goes into the input of the di box and the link goes then back into um, the amp effects return so that loops complete you play as normal for your amp um, but you are recording whatever comes through your preamp um, and so when you capture this sort of signal when you go into your door, into your um, ab uh, absum, you realistically only have to apply a power amp and a speaker um, IR, a speaker um, cab of some sort. You might want to put in extra effects, delays, things like that. Those usually work um, in that sense. But um, essentially, you're capturing your amps preamp. So if you really love your amps preamp, this is the way to go. The next one is probably a little bit more final. So that means that if you really love your amp and you want to capture the whole amp with your pedal board, everything, um, you can do that. And you do that by plugging, if your amp allows that, either if it has a slave or a plug for a speaker, you use a speaker cable. This is important to not use a patch cable or a guitar cable. Use a speaker cable and you take either from the slave out on the back of your amp or from your speaker out and you put it into the input of your DI box. If you have a slave, that's where it ends, you're fine. If you don't have a slave, you can then use another speaker cable to connect the link back to your speaker cab. That means you can play through your amp as normal and what you're capturing through your DI box and your um, interface into your door is actually the full sound of the amp minus the speaker so you're not micing up a speaker or anything like that this is a really nice way to do it but it comes with some hazards number one you need to make sure um, that there's a load on your speaker uh, on your amp head via a speaker or a load box or something because if you have a valve amp i think most people know this by now you need to have a load on it so the di box can take usually take a hell of a lot of wattage and volts but your amp head needs to push to somewhere. So you can't just take your amp uh, um, speaker out and plug it into the DI box and you're done. You have to put a load on your um, speaker on your amp head on your power amp. If you have a um, solid state, they say you don't need it. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, this is also a good way you can get an attenuator and you put it in between there, which means that you can really pump your amp up really push your power amp but you can attenuate your speaker um, uh, the di box is not an attenuator by the way another please don't do that and which means that you can pretty much get a nice load of it and capture the full driven um, amp head preamp and power amp so a couple of things to look out for then is you will most likely be need to be really careful um, with your inputs make sure you, that your um, attenuation pads are switched on um, your master switched low and slowly but surely bring them up and to see where you are with levels to capture a good level uh, and that you don't overpower your inputs of your um, interface or your computer so the di box usually is fine it's your um, interface and your ipad that you need to look after so please read your instructions read your manuals um, don't just plug it straight into the di box and push up the volume because something will blow and it's not going to be my fault okay cheers so what I've done is um, we are actually currently linked up in this 
format guitar is straight into the um, sorry straight into the DI box the DI box is straight into the into the interface and into the door and you'll see what's happening here so <laughs> This is just Amplitube, we have a OCD running and uh, quite low drive, it goes into a Mesa Boogie Cloak Mark 3 I think and a it's a Fender 4x10 Now I'm just gonna quickly change these out makes a huge difference. I love Amplitude for how you can manipulate certain things and get a really nice clean tone. Drums coming. other things like for example add some delay Unfortunately, I accidentally did the usual while recording, just press spacebar and stopped everything. So. If anybody ever wondered how good these uh, things are, if you've never played around with one, I'm going to turn the volume on the guitar down and clean up the signal. different ways of connecting and getting a really clean tone um, the whole DI track is in the background also recording so you can see that there's hardly any noise if you do this properly anyway till next time thank you very much bye